And welcome to the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR's local talk radio. But we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And we're coming directly to your smartphone, if your phone is smart, with the free TuneIn Radio app. You can also get that anywhere in the world. I can testify to that as I actually listened in when I was down in Arizona on my smartphone. Very cool stuff. You can tell your friends that they can get in on some Liberty Radio wherever they are around the world simply by using their smartphone. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio and the monkey behind the machine, so to speak. I'm here to push the buttons and make sure that the message gets out this morning. The real voice of the show, of course, the Bennett Brothers from Bighorn Enterprises. We've got Josh Bennett here in the studio, and we've also got Aaron Bennett, and we have another guest. You want to introduce the other person in here today, or is he just lurking, Josh? Well, it's another Aaron. It's a friend of ours, Aaron Cooper. He's up from Kojak All right. to visit. Welcome to the program, and uh, good morning, Ooh, Mr. Pleasant. Bennett. Good morning, Mr. Bennett, morning. and good morning, Mr. Cooper. Good to see you again. It's good to be back. Good. Yeah, I decided to bring back some sunshine, but apparently we lost my bags over yeah. there at the airport. The sunshine and you brought back the cold, <laughs> was, too. The sunshine was in a different bag. We, we lost that one. It got shipped someplace else. TSA probably confiscated that one. What? Happiness? Take that away. <laughs> the bugger mice to mice to bugger. Remember that old show? Oh, yeah. We're going to watch it here probably next week. Bugger mice to mice to bugger. Santa Claus story. Yeah. You talk about taking away the happiness. That's yeah, he did. What the Burger Meister was all about. Mm-hmm. So what's on the docket today? He was today? a German, I think, too, which makes so much sense. What is on the docket today? Today is... Uh, the anniversary of the, well, what used to be known as the Bill of Rights, which is kind of neat, kind of gone, but kind of neat, I guess. I was thinking about reading them all and everything, but then it's kind of like, what's the point? Kind of a waste of time, to me anyways, because what is a Bill of Rights? So you, we're telling, I mean, first of all, it was the state that wrote out the Bill of Rights, that granted them us. And what's interesting, too, is they call those the first ten amendments to the Constitution. So if you take it to its uh, logical end, with before this Bill of Rights, the Constitution, you didn't have any of these so-called rights. They had to be amended. The Constitution had to be amended so you had the right to free speech and freedom of religion. The Constitution had to be amended for you to supposedly have the right to keep and bear arms had to be amended for you to have the right to trial by jury. It had to be amended to be secure in your home without warrant, which is a pretty interesting way to think of it, I think, anyways. To be, to have, supposedly have these rights, the Constitution that was ratified by the states, Virginia and certain other states, New York, they held off. Virginia especially because they said, no, without a Bill of Rights, we're not going to sign on to this. So they got their Bill of Rights. But in order to have these so-called rights grant, not supposedly we say that there were inherent rights that we had and we just codified them into the Constitution, but it had to be amended for us to have those. That's what they are, the first ten amendments to the Constitution. I actually was talking to somebody about that when I was down in Arizona. I had a Mm. bunch of very interesting conversations with family members. They found out I hadn't voted and... Uh, a few of them, they they absolutely lost their minds and started. I mean, they they just they could not comprehend that I did not vote. Uh, a couple of others lost their religion and started saying things that I never thought I'd hear coming out of their mouth. It was kind of an interesting time. Uh, but well, we, yeah, you failed to worship their God. We we talked about these first ten amendments because the the whole point is when the founders sat down, they tried to make the best government they could, and they realized that even then. They were building a framework by which every single person could be hanged. And so they went and they wanted to make sure that we're perfectly clear. I mean, look at the very first one. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. And the whole, and then the next one. Or prohibiting the exercise thereof. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, going on abridging the, free, the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to, ass- to assemble. The whole point of it is that we want to make it clear in formulating this government, that the government does not have the power to regulate your religion or to regulate your speech or to regulate your ability to go out and meet with other people. Or to protect yourself 
or to be carried off into right now you're going into the other amendments all, all of which all of these other amendments are the same thing they're negative they are restrictions on the government they aren't saying they aren't granting right the restrictions people anything they are just making sure that the people coming be, behind them 200 plus years are going to say hey we're not supposed to make a law about that well guess what we've made laws about all of these i mean yeah. we the government has yeah, we got to get out of the. Yeah, the we I'm, and the they has to. Right. Get in the out same of our stroke, language. they granted Congress the power to legislate law and left it up to the jury to nullify that if it got out of hand. You can't. I mean, you can't even have a bill of rights or a restriction on government, so to speak, and give a body of men the power to create law. The two don't even coincide. <laughs> Right, because what you have is that you had the state grant, as far as they're concerned, these Bill of Rights. The state, as far as they're concerned, granted you these rights. And the state... The state was granting the federal government limitations, right? Granting them the the right to exist under those limitations. Well, the limitations supposedly were set out in the Constitution. But the arbitrator of the limitations is that same federal government. So they get to decide whether they're breaking the Constitution or not. Even when the FBI guy was on with uh, Michael Dukes here a couple of weeks ago, he said, well, if the Congress says it's constitutional, then it's constitutional. And if it's not, then the Supreme Court will decide. Well, the Supreme Court is the exact same federal government as the Congress and the Senate and the President. or the same body of government. There is no limitation. There's no restraint. There's nothing well, when like, you are the person that gets to decide the rules and whether you're breaking them. Even in that federal trial, Cox could have, um, all that could have been usurped if the uh, jury that he had would have decided that it was uh, violating his rights. They could have, but the judge could have also just told them to shut up. That wouldn't happen. Yeah, it would. Now, Aaron, what you're saying about the, the nullification by jury, I mean, that right there is the linchpin of the whole thing. Because even if the Congress has the power, and I use my little air quotes for that word, uh, authority, whatever word you want to, in, in, I mean, it's not really authority. Because if we're reading the Constitution, and we're reading the Declaration of Independence, and we're saying that God is the one who grants rights, and the government does not have the authority to take those rights away, however, the government always has the power. Correct. Because the government has the guns, the government has the swords, the government has the horses, the, the tanks, whatever it is. If, if when it comes down to it, the government oversteps its bounds and makes a stupid law, the people, through the jury system, have the right to annul it. I saw something happen in Arizona. Can I tell you about it? That I thought was... Um, it was very, sun was shining? No, well. Oh. It, was, it was very <laughs> illustrative of this fact. You know, they 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 having a hard time with people speeding on the freeways down there. I mean, that's shocking, right, that people would speed on the freeway. So they had and put in a whole bunch of those radar the, the radar guns that take pictures oh, yeah. as people are speeding by, and they couldn't get a conviction out of it, even though they clearly had the person's photograph. When it got challenged, the people were like, that's not me. Prove that's me. That's somebody that looks like me. And that's my car, but that's not me. Right, but for right now, <laughs> we're granted... The privilege to say it's not us. Well, the thing Regarded is, the privilege of a trial. It became so expensive for the government to oh, try nice. to get to try to get an, a, a, a single conviction out of it that they just took them down because it was costing them more to operate those radar photos than it was because they weren't getting any money out of it. It became more costly for them to try to take people to court to get them to pay. Well, it's hard to believe that they would worry about cost analysis well i mean but you know what it was beautiful driving through the, the free, uh, on the freeways in arizona i didn't have to worry about the speed limit at all i mean, I mean the last time i was there just three years ago i was i was constantly watching over my shoulder in this case i just kept up with traffic and i realized even though the posted speed limit was 65 everywhere i went in downtown fairbanks we are phoenix i think the slowest we went except for rush hour was 75 we were cruising around at 85 90 miles an hour because everybody else was too and it, you know what? They weren't crashing into each other. They weren't driving each other off into a, the median. They weren't being crazy. Mm. But they were breaking the law. They were breaking the law. Technically, yes. But the law had no teeth because they couldn't enforce it. Well, 
I kind of liked that. Yeah. What, what, what if what if we made other laws unenforceable? You've talked, Josh, about the 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 Burroughs wood burning issue. Right. Well, yeah. Forget about. Uh, yeah, you got to do what you should. <laughs> kind of lost the picture, for a minute. <laughs> You got it. With the bur- wood, the wood burn, sure, burn what you want. I don't care. In fact, I think we shouldn't even vote it on the thing. Just do what we want, anyways. But uh, going back to with the the back to the Bill of Rights, which are a joke when you have the uh, the state itself deciding on what those Bill of Rights were, and you had Patrick Henry and. Uh, some of the other guys, whose names, I can't think of them right off the bat. But anyways, they would not. You're they getting wouldn't texted and you're, you're it's like, <laughs> they ADHD wouldn't get signed moment. up for the Constitution or whatever okay. until they had a Bill of Rights. So they got a Bill of Rights. But what you have is a state deciding, like I said, on what those rights are and whether they're the ones breaking them or not. We don't have a Second Amendment anymore. As much as we like to think, well, I got a gun, and they're not taking them from us. But you have a gun that they allow you to have. You can't own what you want to own. Otherwise, I would. I'd have a belt-fed 50 caliber machine gun or a quad or something like that, something sweet. Well, that, technically, you can own that. Right. If you jump If you have to pay a tax and for pay it. A tax and what if I, what about a tank? Can though. I own a tank? You should be able to. I'd like to own it. I, I understand. I heard yesterday that the gun that was used in that massacre in Connecticut was already illegal. It was an illegal gun that was used in that. I thought they just used like two pistols and an AR-15. I get one well, actually, the AR-15 was in the trunk of the car. Something I don't know. There's so many different. Well, it's a good reason to get rid of all guns. Yeah, but let's not get off track here. Back to the Bill of Rights and the crappiness of them. They're gone. There's no such thing as a Bill of Rights. I mean, what is the object of a government in the first place? What is the purpose of a government? What do they do? The first thing they're going to do is to... Get more power. For them to exist, they have to grow. There's no way you can limit a government with a piece of paper called the Constitution. How is that even possible? I mean, right off the bat, we had the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions because George or John Adams, did the Alien and Sedition Act, said if, and he was the second president of the United States, one of the founding fathers, one of the guys that was pounding on the right to trial by jury. He was. I think he had a lot of great things. But when he became president, he decided, as a federalist, if you speak out against my government, my administration, you will be locked up. So the federalist rounded up the anti-federalist. Anyone that spoke out against John Adams was thrown into prison. They had no right to habeas corpus. They had no right to trial. They had nothing. So here we have eight years after the Constitution was signed... The very people that wrote it were violating it. And the Ten Amendments were trash. And uh, John, or uh, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who were brilliant men, I think, also, that, and Jefferson did not like the Constitution from day one. James Madison was basically, they call him the the father of the Constitution because he wrote a lot of it, along with John Jay. And even Madison was a Federalist, Originally, he wrote the Federalist Papers and blah, blah, blah. was one of them that wrote them. And so he saw the Alien and Sedition Act as treasonous to the states. So they wrote up the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions that said, this is wrong what the federal government's doing. The state of Kentucky will not follow this law. We are nullifying it. We have the right to nullify. The Kentucky resolutions are the same thing. When the government violates the Constitution, we are not obligated to obey it. The federal government said, screw you. There's nothing they could do about it. The Alien and Sedition Act did not stop. They kept on rounding people up. Preachers were rounded up. Anyone that was seditious towards the government, which in other words means that you said something bad against the government. So all you people that say something bad against Barack Obama, you would be thrown in prison. This is eight years after the signing of the Constitution, after the Constitution was ratified and we had our first president and we had our second one, John Adams. Are you saying that all these states that keep uh, passing all these resolutions uh, in the last two or three years to put a stop to Obama don't mean anything? No. They do mean something. And I hope that they keep doing it. As long as there's somebody out there 
that is going against the power of the state, I'm all for it. Anything, even if it's another state, that's fine. Infighting's great for liberty. As long as it's state on state, have at it. Beat each other up. I'm saying it's pretty much worthless because none of them have any teeth behind it. Because they've nullified um, the NDAA and whatever. And whatever. They'll still go in there and they'll still go in under the Patriot Act. I know some states have nullified the Patriot Act supposedly and the federal government will still go in there and arrest people without warrants and break down your door and they'll do whatever they want. The federal government is an entity, is a beast unto itself now. And it, its only job is to grow. And the only way it can grow is to take more from the little surfies that live in its jurisdiction that it creates, mm-hmm. decides for itself. So basically I want to say not necessarily that this is the anniversary of the Bill of Rights, maybe the anniversary of the death of the Bill of Rights. It's long been dead. And the only reason the government gives us any platitudes and lets us get along at all, the only reason they do is so we won't overthrow them. That's the only stinking reason you have your the ability to have a job. The only reason you have the ability to buy a piece of property or anything. Just enough you to make you happy your, enough. Pay your all your dues to be able to well, have Well, of course, you have to pay your dues. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise it wouldn't be out. a privilege. You're not patriotic if you don't pay your taxes. Yeah, they have to take you, you out. You have to pay your dues if you want to get married. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or drive. No, and everything. The the Bill of Rights is dead. Nullification. That's why I can't today I think nullification is a joke. Show me where it's working. Show me where a state actually stands up to the federal government and says no. I'm glad that they're passing these deals against the NDAA. I'm glad they're passing nullifications against the Patriot Act. But show me some teeth. Really? As soon as the federal government... I mean, what's the federal government going to do? You're going to say... Well, you can't do that, federal government. And the federal government goes, oh, well, we better go to court. Hey, uh, federal government court. Is the federal government Congress right? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. We we pay your salary. Oh, yeah. Yep. Constitutional. Look at the Obamacare. Yep. We all know that's a pile of crap. There's nowhere in the Constitution that gives the federal government the authority to pass a health care bill. They do it anyways. They don't care. The and Constitution the, is toilet. And, and these so-called conservative judges, oh, remember, yeah. they're the ones who did the, the, mental gym, okay. the mental gymnastics to turn around and call it a tax. Yeah. And say, well, of course, the, the Congress has the power to pass the tax, so it's constitutional. Boom. Of course it's Move constitutional. On. Anything they say is, is. Because they gave themselves the right to decide whether it is or not. So you have a body that makes a law or makes a document that is restraining itself, but it gets to decide when it's being too restrained or it needs to unrestrain. Basically, no matter what, the people are the losers. We are the losers in all of this. We're the losers in it. I think the the bottom line, though, Josh, isn't it that the people have come unhinged themselves about whether or not there is such thing as common law or natural law? People don't recognize... That there are certain things that are just simply wrong and you you can't call black white or white black and make it so? That's because of the state. All of it's back to the state. The reason we have people like that is because the state makes silly laws and says this is right or wrong and overlooks other laws that this is right or wrong and makes other things this is right or wrong. How do we know what's right or wrong anymore? Because one day you can text and the next day you can't. One day you can smoke marijuana, and the next day you can't, then the next day you can, then you can't, then you can, then you can't. That sounds like prohibition. One day you can do this, yeah, one day you can drink whiskey, the next day you're prohibited and you're thrown in jail. And the next day they make another amendment and say, no, you can't again. There is no rhyme or reason with political law, and it's fried people's brains. And they love it. I mean, don't think that it's by accident that people are like that. Of course, they love it. They love it violence they love sorry the state loves school shootings that was really horrible what happened yesterday the state loves it it gives them power remember when it was was it Rahm Emanuel or whatever one of the guys there in Obama's administration said never let a crisis go to waste 
So what's he saying? Whenever there's a crisis, they're going to reap the benefits from it. They take advantage of it by getting our emotions up because we're all horrified by what happens. So who do we turn to? The very people that allow it to happen. Where was the state? Our great protector. Why do we need the state? Why do people call in all the, sh the show every time we talk about having a stateless society? They call in and go, it's yeah. It's utopian. What would you do with those bad guys, though? You'd have people run around killing each other all day long and stuff, and you guys can be stupid and everything. we got to <laughs> have the government protecting us. Otherwise, we didn't have the police, and we wouldn't have school shootings. We wouldn't have mall shootings. So... Who's holding them responsible? Isn't that their job? Don't they tax us because they say they need to tax us for our welfare, for our protection, to protect us from the bad guys? Well, where the heck were they? Why isn't the police chief being strung up and run into a trial for not doing his duty? Now, I know people out there, because it's such a horrible thing, they're going to go, I can't, but don't blame the police and blah, blah. Bull crap, I'm going to blame the police. I'm going to blame the state. They're the ones that steal from us because they say that we have to have their protection. Otherwise, we'd be run amok by all these wild anarchists killing everyone everywhere. Well, show me the difference between what's happening now with this all-powerful state, the most powerful state ever known to mankind. And these things still happen. And what are they going to do with it? They're going to take it to the bank, baby. Guaranteed. They'll take this incident and they'll take it to the bank. And you got Barack Obama up there with his crocodile tears. And, you know, maybe he did feel bad about it, whatever. But that piece of crap does it every single day in other countries. But those are brown people that, and brown children that he's killing. He kills Back American citizens, Pakistan. too. Well, that's just the breaks. Killed a 16-year-old American... And that congressman, Republican congressman said, well, that's just a break. You know, he shouldn't have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Really? You're a murderer. No different than the guy that killed a bunch of kids yesterday. Hmm. They do it every single day overseas, and no one cares. In fact, we congratulate ourselves, and we have parades and parties and ticker parades. And Come on. What's the difference? There's no difference there. you got to get rid of the state. I think it's interesting if you, we were talking about prohibition there for a minute. In the 13 years of prohibition, for anybody that may not know, that's when alcohol was illegal in America. That was, those 13 years was the most crime and the most violence America had ever seen in its history up to that point. And it all revolved around alcohol. So the state created the setting for the most violent and outlawish uh, time in America. And here we are, it's been replaced, obviously, by drugs now. The war on drugs, yes. The war on drugs. It's the most, 90% of the violence in America, violent crimes, revolve around drugs. And it's the same thing. The state creates that problem. They the take, state they, is there to create problems. They take our money and create these problems to protect us from, and it actually creates the problem. They, it's beautiful. <laughs> I need to get into that racket. They do it on <laughs> um, they do it on purpose. That's their job, is to create chaos. Otherwise, if, they're, if everything's fine, do you need them? I mean, let's take it religiously, right? When do people start <laughs> praying? When a hurricane when comes the through, sinking. when the boat's sinking, when they're hiding in the foxhole, all of a sudden, you know, when they say... When they're driving up to Prudhoe Bay and it's blowing. There's no ACS in foxholes. It's the same thing mm. with the state. Or you say as long no as there's no atheist once you pass Fox? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Fox isn't a hole, brother. Fox is a nice place. Well, it's kind of lower than No, that. I meant on your way to Prudhoe Bay. <laughs> I'm just but it's the same mentality. Create chaos, keep chaos going, and make hay while the sun's shining. They said it. Uh, and, Rahm you know, Emanuel said it. Don't let any crisis go to waste. And you can, you I'm can pretty see sure that, that uh, Goring said the exact same thing. She exactly. So did Stalin. Yep. Really? Yep. I'm almost positive. I need to Google that, but I'm almost positive that's what Goring said. Was it Goring? I, I, well, I, you've, you're or actually... Himmler. You're, you're, Himmler. You're both right, but I think the names are wrong. It was it was done in the Nazi Party. I mean, you remember the the whole issue of the violence in the streets. 
It was actually instigated by the Nazis, but then the Nazis were able to capitalize on it to go ahead and head. Right, they and, said it was the, the Russians. E- exactly. But the same thing happened or in the Soviet or communists. I'm it, sorry. The same thing though happened in the Soviet Union. Not socialists. Communists. I, I believe it was the. Um, yeah, I don't know if it was Lenin, but he talked about. I think it was Lenin talked about useful idiots. Oh yeah. Coming up on the Fox News on KFAR. No, no. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're definitely up and leave. Oh my goodness. You know, I, it's funny though. I again coming back from Arizona, flying in. I was just nice to come home. Yeah. Even though it was snowy, even though it's cold here, it's home. You know. Yeah, we got a crappy government, but it's nice to live here anyway. Crappy borough government, that's for sure. Bunch of jokers over there. I'm glad it's dark because I can't see the building. I see they got a lot of lights left on over there, though, wasting my tax dollars. Gosh. Look at all those lights on inside. There's no one over there. Jokers. Gosh, GBA is a co-op, so we're all making money off them leaving the lights on. Wait, (laughs) we're all making money? I'm getting co-opted, that's for sure, but I don't know (laughs) if it has anything to do with what kind of co-op. It's not definitely not a co-operation. Well, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, it is. You're forced to cooperate. (laughs) Pray or die. Cooperate or get assimilated. Yeah, I kind of, you know, we lost our power for like seven hours the other night. I'm expecting a rebate check. I wasn't able to use the power that I wanted to. And you, you'll use the power they give you, and you'll be happy about it. Yeah, that's true. Come on, what are you thinking? You know, a guy emailed me. And we were talking about the rights of the juries and stuff. Oh, why do people have your phone number? So, this guy emailed me and he said, uh, yeah, no. Back to the juries, he said, the problem today is that the schools are the ones teaching our jurors. And what are they teaching? Oh, yeah, obedience yeah. to the state. It's all obedience to the state. I know I'm being a little negative on the on the, on the get-go on here. On the state? What? But I want to encourage people... To read up on nullification, read the Kentucky Resolutions, read the Virginia Resolutions. And I'd like to encourage our state to do something. We're pretty pathetic here. I mean, pff, it's disgusting. Read something about what's going on in the past so you know what's going on, what's going to happen in the future. These people that are calling for secession, I think it's wonderful. Everything that is against the state is a great thing. Everything. The people wanting to be free is a good thing. Whether if it's through nullification or it's through secession, whatever the deal. I mean, we believe in the right of secession down to the individual level. If you don't want to participate, you shouldn't be forced to. If you're forced to, you're not free. That's the end of it. The land of the free and the home of the brave, you're forced to be a part of it by your very basic birth here. And they call it, well, it's a social contract, which is bull crap. Social contract, what? I was never asked to sign anything. It was forced upon me. It's foisted on me by the point of a gun. And we don't need it. The state is our detriment. Every single day, this borough government is our detriment. We, we like to look back at other countries and think about, well, you know, they had kings and dictators and emperors and rulers and blah, blah, blah. We're free here. Really? We have a ruling class here. It's called the state. Once you get into that class, you're good to go. They pay you for the rest of your stinking life. You get to use everything that they own. There is, an, there is a class war. We don't believe in classes. But there is a class war. It's called the ruling class and the ruled class. We're the ruled. They're the ruling class. It's not for our benefit. And to keep thinking that it is, that there's some good reason to have them, is just to be ignorant. Well, there is, Josh. They just need to be limited. (laughs) You're going to go back down that road again. Right, but there's no way to limit a structure. Yeah, I'm going to go down that road. That's everybody's cop-out. That it works it's great. It's not everybody's cop out. Limited. It's it's the so-called conservative cop out. This is part of the another one of the problems with the political system was we are given a false choice. We get two choices and that's it. You either get the you're in favor of big government uh, telling you what to do in every place else, like the business, the boardroom, but not the bedroom. 
That's like the only place that the government's not allowed in in that point of view. And then you got the other side where the government's in everything, and they call that one the conservative one. Right. Well, it's just that it's going to be limited involvement. They're just in not going to steal as much. But it's going to be limited stuff. involvement in your bedroom. They're only going to give you licenses to get married. They're not going to tell you what position to use. That's it's going not to be, necessarily always true. Depends on what state you're in. <laughs> They're going to give you limited government in, and involvement in the boardroom. They'll only tax it's a, you know through the taxes or through the regulations. How many Republicans have you heard talk about how regulation is necessary in business? On your show. Uh, all the time. All the stinking time. What we have, the reason that we're getting along here is because people think that we're free to choose our representatives, right? Well, that's a joke. First of all, there's a ruling class that we just talked about. The people that rule. Then there's the people that are ruled, us. Now, when we say, well, yeah, we get to choose our representatives. Do you really get to choose your representatives? Okay, let's just say that everyone gets to pick their own representatives. So you go down and you go vote or whatever. How many thousands of people would be voted for? If everyone just got to choose their own representatives. Thousands and thousands and thousands actually, of people would be voted for. I'm pretty sure that every person would vote for themselves. Well, they'd either vote for themselves, they'd vote for their buddy, vote for their boss, vote for the employee of the year, whatever. No one would vote for the people. I bet you'd have a 98% to 99% turnout of voter for self. Maybe, but the point is, if we all just got to vote for whoever we wanted to, as we tell ourselves, we get to choose our representatives... No one would be elected because no one would have a majority. So who do we get to vote for? We get to vote for the people that a small ruling class pick for us to vote for. Otherwise, well, how would we have a government? People would just be voting for themselves. So we have a ruling class that picks one, two, maybe three people, and they say, here's your choice. Here's who you get to vote for, whether it's down to your local government, your state government, whatever. I mean, when you look at the state representatives, who do you get to vote for? You get to vote for one Democrat and one Republican and maybe an independent or whatever. You don't get to vote for whoever you want to. I mean, you could say, well, yeah, you can still go in there and vote for Mickey Mouse, but those aren't your choices. And you know that's just a waste of time. And and if they are independent, like the... uh Tea Party guys that mopped it up a couple years ago. I mean, they won all over the place. Whatever happened to them? They just get incorporated. They got corp- they, they got co-opted. Yeah. You talk about co-op, I mean, they got sucked into the Republican machine. They got sucked into power. No way. Political power. We've talked about this ad nauseum for the last year and a half. Political power destroys everyone. That's why you have liberals that are anti-war get in there. When they get the button, they're like, yeah, kill time. And you get Republicans that are anti-taxes, like, you know, the great Mr. Reagan. He cut taxes once and raised them seven times, six times. You know, the father of modern conservatism that we all want to emulate because he cut taxes once, raised them six now, I only went to third grade in public school, and after that I was homeschooled, but I can do the math and figure out that that means, even if I'm like, you're that there adding them or subtracting, I can figure out that he raised taxes more times than he didn't raise taxes. Yeah, but what if he lowered them so much it took seven times to get them back to normal? <laughs> What's normal? Yeah. So anyways, back to the free choice where we all get to... No, there's no free choice because the political system itself, the ruling class picks the people that you get to vote for, and then that's your choice. Look at the presidential race this year. They picked the ruling class, your oligarchy landowner rulers. They picked Barack Obama. You will vote for him or you will vote for Mitt Romney. And then this little guy, Gary Johnson, goes, and how about me? Well, he was picked from a ruling party, too, even though they just don't have enough clout yet. Yes. Yeah. I, I, how many people have you heard saying, well, we just need to, we just need a good person? We just need a good person to get in office, Josh. We just well, need not as pr- many as you hear say that we just uh, we got to vote for the lesser of the yeah. two evils. <laughs> well, Lisa, I heard her call Michael Duke's show the other day when he was on Problem Corner. Well, it was Problem Corner, Michael Duke's. So she was castigating 
certain people, I don't know who she was talking about, that say you shouldn't vote because people are evil and you shouldn't vote for the lesser two evils. And she said, but smart people know that everyone's evil. All men are fallen. No one's perfect. So you got to pick one of them. Well, thank you, by the way, because you made my point in cast in stone. Exactly mm -hmm. right. That's the whole point. Of not, Every of man not voting. is evil. Yeah. So which one of them should, since they're not perfect, rule over us? I, that None. was how I None. that was how I made the point to my mom. We had one of those very interesting conversations while I was home. She was one of the I mean, she was so disappointed to learn that I had not voted. And you know how it is when mom is disappointed in you. <laughs> She's like, I'm so, yeah. so disappointed. I've known that for 38 years. <laughs> but I I, I, I I said, look, mom, you grew up during World War II. She was like 10 years old mm -hmm. in World War II. And I said, if, if you had the choice to vote between Himmler and Hitler, who would you choose? And she said, I, I wouldn't. Okay. Well, that's my point. I do not see... And she's like, well, how can you say Mitt Romney is like Himmler? I mean, she was obviously thinking that the, the worst of the two would be Obama. Barack right? Obama. Well, 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 Mom, how do you know he wouldn't be? Look at his record. Mm -hmm. Just look at his record alone. What did he do when he was governor? Wait, wait one sec, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Himmler was way worse than Hitler. <laughs> wow. Mitt Romney was the one that said you got to go by their records, and that's all we were talking about. Was well, see, that's what I'm doing. I'm going did. by the record. That's true. Himmler was way worse. No, you got a good point. So but I think we're, she had a good point of saying that he was like Mitt Romney. We're Americans, so we're taught now mm -hmm. that we should choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. But if we were really Americans and we go back to the revolutionaries, the guys that stood at Concord, the guys that stood up in Lexington... To not be ruled. To not be ruled. That's Americanism. Secession is an American tradition. Secessionism is one of the first American traditions because that's when we became free. That's when we became America and not a British colonies. Secession. So the, the Revolutionary War, that was basically just a thing called secessionism. So then technically, today, you know, you're, you're celebrating the death of the Bill of Rights, even though it's the birthday of the... the yeah, it's been dead for like 200 uh, and... In a, yeah, I mean, in, in a sense, though, couldn't you say that the, all of America, the Republic itself, died under Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, wasn't it... Uh, no, actually, Mayberry's got a really good point on that with uh, we're actually in our fifth government right now in America and when he was on a couple weeks ago he talked about when each one died hmm. and when the next one started and we're right now back to Abraham Lincoln the one that Lincoln started is the one where we are now because Lincoln he committed treason when the states you know when you look at the constitution it talks about treason it's anything you know to causing war against the states not the federal government, the states. So he 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 uh, declared war on the states. He committed treason against the Union when he did that. They had the right to secede. And treason is laid out very plainly as war against the states, not against the federal government. So he declared war against the states, and by the Constitution, he committed treason against the Union. They had the right... To secede. We still have the right to secede. Man always has the right to secede. That's something you need to birth in you. Get it in your brain. Get it in your soul. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Secede. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. You know what that is? That's secession. Secede. That is our first American tradition, is secession. And we need to get that boiling in our brain. And I'm right, not and talking the, about the violent only, revolution. The only um, contradic contradictory to it is the use of force. I just said I'm not talking about violent revolution. No, you don't I'm, need. I'm saying the only the price you pay for secession is the use of force. Right, the other side. Right. Yeah, they're going to come down and hammer. I mean, it's kind of funny when they're asking Obama. Hey, we want to secede. Will you give us the peaceful rights to secede from the union? Blah blah blah. And of course. He's actually supposed to respond because he's gotten them and he hasn't. Well, he's well, not well, well he... okay, now why would he respond to that any more than he would respond to the petition to build a, Beth, a Death Star? 
Did you hear about that? Enough people signed the petition on the White House, uh, on the same White House uh, listing there on the website, demanding that the government build a Death Star, literally. Enough people signed that petition. I heard someone talking about that, and they basically we don't have enough money. Otherwise, we'll we build the build the Yeah. Well, I, I if but maybe if we, we built like a small one, but then it wouldn't really. You know, most of us would look at that. Bill. I would have signed that bill. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was just thinking to myself that you know that that one is so clearly fantasy in my mind that you know why would anyone sign it in the first place? Isn't that how most people look at the secession issue? It's just uh, such clearly there's, fantasy. There's some upset no, think, people about the election, but I mean, it's kind of a joke because if Mitt Romney would have won, they wouldn't have. Signed a secessionist movement. There wouldn't be a secessionist movement, which is so stupid because it's not Mitt Romney and it's not Obama. It's the state. It's the same people. I mean, just because you got a different face up there, you got the same flag behind them, you got the same law books behind them, you got the same Congress making the laws and the same courts upholding them. You got the same uh, bureaucracies. bureaucracies. That's the biggest joke. Yes. Hmm. Secede. I was gonna actually do a deal today on secession, but just there's so many, <laughs> so many things going on. Just decided not to. You but, wanna, we haven't opened the phone lines, by the way, yet. If, if, if no, people are do. people are wondering if they're calling in, they're getting a busy tone. They're like, why can't they get through? Because there's so many people trying to get through. It's just like our lines are busy. Oh, we haven't opened them. Well, I'll quit calling so other people can call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we call our own line, so it looks like we're... Just, hey, look at the so phone wait, line. Wait, wait, wait. You're the one that, that, that keeps calling? Yeah, he calls the radio I call line. and hang up. I call the hotline. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so nice to hear. Yeah, we'll take calls if you guys are even interested. 458 Talk is the number if you want to call in and participate that way. Also, remember, you can uh, go on to the website, which is patriotslament.blogspot.com. Mm-hmm. On and our emails, patriotslament at gmail.com. You know, I was thinking about this deal with uh, school shootings. And it's a horrible thing. I mean, little kids were shot. Yeah. Kindergartners. The best way to get rid to stop school shootings would be to eliminate public schools. Uh, you know what? That, that, it was a knee-jerk reaction yesterday. It was just with an hours. Mayor Blooming Idiotberg, a Republican, by the way, Mayor Bloomberg yeah, in New York, uh, he was coming cool. out saying that we this is the time we need a national policy to ban guns. It's like oh, this knee-jerk yeah. reaction. We have to ban. Well, how about I, I, I like your solution better. You know, it, it, the, obviously the problem is public schools. We need to ban public schools. Yeah, then you can't get that many kids in one spot. Be there beautiful. hasn't been. Well, they any, have to go to the roller rink. <laughs> there hasn't been any, and I'm sure I don't even like saying this because then it'll happen. There hasn't been any mass homeschooling shootings, so far as I know. And I'm not trying to belittle what happened either, but. Last week we talked about the public education system and we were calling them to eliminate it. Well, I think we just got another good reason to. How many school shootings have we had? And of course they're all gun-free zones. Mm-hmm. Where do we always have violence? In gun-free zones. I mean, people don't go down to the gun range and say, yeah, I'm going to go down there and mass murder a bunch of people with weapons. No, they go kill innocent kids. They go kill people that they know you don't have a weapon there. And I've heard people say, well, we need to arm the school teachers, we need to arm the principals, we need to arm everyone. Yeah, blah, blah. We yeah. need to post guard. I mean, they're, that's, they're talking about that here in Fairbanks, by the way. There's an article in the News Miner today about how they're talking about uh, how to make the schools safer here in Fairbanks to include metal detectors and armed guards. Yeah, let's make it more like a prison. I'm sure that'll do very, very well for the learning environment. Let's make it more like a prison where you have armed guards walking around, metal detectors, strip search the kids while we're at it, and all that good stuff. You know, when my dad was in school, he could take his gun with him. They put it in a locker once they got there. The school did. So he'd go hunting as soon as he left. Uh, There weren't too many school shootings back then. What I don't understand is weapons are prohibited on school grounds. The people that shot those kids obviously didn't know that. They might not have read the law, or maybe the posters weren't in the correct place. Gun-free it's zone possible. or something like that. Or yeah. maybe the guy went to probably, public school. It was probably covered up by the drug-free oh, yeah, zone. I mean, maybe guy. the guy went to public school and couldn't read the sign. Oh, no, you see what... what, what <laughs> <laughs> 
I, you know, there was a story just the other day about how somebody had gone to a school intending to shoot it up and saw the sign that said it was a gun-free zone and turned around and left. Didn't you hear about that? Yeah, one? it's a joke. Uh, just, it's uh, sick. Oh, wait, I can't have a gun here. It's okay. a sick joke, and the state's going to make sunshine and hay out of it, and they're going to end up taking away more of our rights. That's all they're going to do. They're not going to make us Can we call them safe. privileges, please? Because I don't believe we can take away no, rights. Our, no, wait, wait. We're going to... I'm sure that there's going to be a vote, and we're all going to decide to take away each other's rights. Doesn't that make it better? Yeah. Then it's majority. Can we call it revoking privileges? It oh, just makes me feel better. Someone's actually calling. Yeah, we have a couple of Okay, oh let's do gosh. this. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Is Who's you? this? Hey, this is Hillbilly. Hillbilly, what's on your mind today? Well, I just wanted to compliment you all and... On your use of the scripture, come out from Babylon. It sounds like you're moving my direction in, in, in thoughts, so I thought I'd call in and give a shameless plug for the community that's growing out in the wilderness. They're, we're thinking of leapfrogging beyond telephone range here soon. Probably never hear from us again. We'll be so far out. Mm. But it is happening, and mm. if there's any Christian folk out there, I know there are because I meet them. There are more and more coming up from the 48 states, and I'm meeting people in town that are kind of like, well, we're here in Fairbanks. We don't know where we want to go next, but we want to get out of this borough. Things like that, you know. So, anybody who's interested, you know, you you hear my number from time to time on other shows. Call Hillbilly and talk because there are people who are getting out of Babylon physically, and, and personal secession is what I've been preaching since I came up here to Alaska, and you know it. Yeah. You have to secede. Individual secession. Refuse to pay your taxes. Arrange your life so that you don't have to pay taxes. It's easy. You know, there's a lot of women out there working second jobs, That if and they're Christian people. And if she would quit her second job, the family would no longer make enough to pay taxes. And if they were to put a garden in instead of that second job, they would have just as much wealth as she was bringing in. It's all a question of whether you consider wealth to be denominated in Federal Reserve notes or whether you are broad-minded enough to see that everything is wealth. The transfer site is a mine of pure wealth. I probably mine twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, and I probably don't put a hundred hours of work into that. Yeah, it's wealth. If you can open your mind to seeing that, that the food growing out of the ground is enough to feed you. If you can open your mind to those kinds of changes, you can get free from Babylon before it collapses. And if you don't, well, then it's going to collapse on you. So you might as well try, and everybody needs to get more free. Just express your own rights. Nobody took them away from you. You still have those rights. They are only oppressing you, and they're doing it legally. The 16th Amendment absolutely gives them the right to Obamacare. Yep. 16th Amendment says you no longer have property. They can tax everything. Therefore, whatever they're not taxing is their grant to you. Therefore, they can tell you how to spend it. Exactly right. And when they come in and take your guns, and when they take all your cash and simply say nobody gets a paycheck anymore, everybody's working for the government, when they do that, the international community will say, well, of course they have the right to. It's right there in their Constitution. And no one's going to come in and save America from the oppression. It's legal. What they're doing is legal. And you're not going to change it. The only option is to secede secede individually in your heart and give your soul back to Jesus and make him your king. Then find other people who have done the same thing and plan your secession and you're in an ideal place to do it because Fairbanks is the very edge of the world anyway. <laughs> but as the oppression rises, you're going to have to you're going to have to do it. And the next thing I would encourage you just to give you something that you probably haven't heard lately from here very much recognize in scripture if you're Christian, I'm only talking to Christians but recognize in scripture that the whore of Babylon deceives the nations through her pharmacy. That's the Greek word, pharmakos. It's translated sorcery in that Revelation passage. That's how Babylon is going to get you. That final mark of the beast is going to come through the pharmaceutical Obamacare system. It's that serious. It is that serious. You've got to learn how to be healthy without their medicine because they're going to control you through pharmacy. All right? Yeah, wow. just to uh, follow heavy, up man. on that, too, um, for people that are thinking about that, just to follow up what you said about uh, foods and things like that, there, 
there is a wealth of knowledge out there on eating healthy. There is more and more people coming out against the pharmaceuticals and telling how they control things, how evil they are, how the states use Well, they're in cahoots with the states. The LouRockwell.com every day has two or three articles on there about eating healthy, real foods, yep. growing gardens, and yep. staying out of pharmaceuticals and what pharmaceuticals do to you. And so it's not, you know, one of the quotes on the next show is when the, my daughter quotes, well, God, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Right. And that's just basically your own stupidity because yep. the knowledge is out there. The knowledge is everywhere. It's beating on our door. And all we got to do, stand at the door and knock. Open it. Yep. The knowledge is there. Well, that's why I can have the joy of the Lord even in the midst of this tribulation period that we're in. As the pressure grows, it will squeeze the pure oil out of the mash and those that are ready, willing to hear, will hear. And those that have eyes to see, will see that the oppression is intolerable. And yet, that revolution is impossible. And that the only other answer is to flee Babylon. So I'm getting more and more friends who are talking to me about it. And saying, okay, what are these secrets? Let me throw one at you. Here's, here's a really good secret that will keep a lot of people from starving to death, okay? Mm-hmm. Don't, in, in, when the emergency comes, don't grind your grain into flour sprout it a 50 pound sack of wheat ground into grain will feed you for 50 days a pound a day but a 50 pound sack of wheat sprouted will feed you all winter long yeah okay and and you'll get the, the b vitamins and stuff that aren't even in the grain it's the miracle of life so bring that seed to life and if you do that you can grow huge amounts of green vegetables in your house in the wintertime. It doesn't even take light. It doesn't take dirt. You can grow them in in a jar and eat them. Everyone should up here in Alaska should eat sprouts. So there's my hint for the day to make you a much wealthier person. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. We're at the top of the hour. That was an awesome call. 458 Dog is the number if you'd like to call in to get in queue for the next hour. Patriots Lament is on the way right after the Fox News. Remember to check us out online, KFAR660.com, where we are streaming live. You can also listen in on your smartphone if your phone is smart with the free TuneIn Radio app. Check it out and get us there. Just look in the local radio section for KFAR, and you will find us there. More to come after the Fox News. And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, which is a, I, I guess you could call this a paid program. It's kind of like an infomercial for liberty. Here. It's really Christmassy, too. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's made possible because of the, uh, the well, it's, it actually began as an idea coming from the Bennett Brothers. Uh, of why don't we get on the air and talk about the Bill of Rights? Why don't we talk about freedom? Why don't we talk about liberty? Why don't we explore some of these issues instead of just griping and staying within the political system? Let's take it where it leads us. And, and man, look at where we've come over the last year and a half in terms of mm. how just our own personal journeys from when we started the show and, and getting together every single week and talking about it, you know, for an hour. We're expanding it to two hours. Really started out talking about regulatory law and how you can't be free under regulatory law. That's how it really came about. Yeah. Well, it's just one of the subjects we talked about every day. Well, sure. It just. Yeah, it's been a long, fun journey. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. If more people would just people spend the whole time this, but... talking about it with other people, you might see more people getting out from under the system. Instead, I mean, what what do we spend our time doing? Hey, what's on the TV? Coop, you want to roll smoke? Coop, are you you're playing video games over there with your hand? No, no, he's no, re- no. He's rolling smoke. But the, the way I see it is, uh, we believe in these these rights or privileges, if you will, but they're God given rights. But yet we don't believe in God anymore. So we we go to a naturalist point of view and. I believe in love, there is no God, so everything's just going to kind of take place as it is. You might as well serve a government who's going to feed you if you submit to them. But it's the same thing the Israelites did when God brought them out. And what Joshua uh, touched on it earlier today, but when he brought them out of Israel and he's taking them into the Promised Land and he's getting ready to, to cross the Jordan River and he's telling them what's going to take place. He said, you know, be strong and give courage. There's fights. You're going to have to take battles. But when they get in there, they 
they don't do as God tells them to and they they allow certain things to survive and take place in peoples and cultures and so they live with them and then they over a while adapt their point of view slowly they started taking on their different idols and different gods and different things and and then as they started doing this the Lord he called them whores through the prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah he said quit whoring yourselves out to the world he says I've called you a special people a peculiar people he says I have good things for you why do you submit to lesser things, to idols, to governments that they put in place. When I want to rule you, I want to judge you, I want to take care of you. And I believe it's kind of the same thing here. It was like we're we're selling ourselves short. And ultimately, they uh, they cried for a king. Yeah. And he right. told them the laments they would have for that because they're replacing him for their king. Yeah. You know, it's just they like rejected, today. I mean, yeah, they reject me. It's interesting. I actually, uh, I know it may sound surprising, but I, I read the scriptures. I just read the book of Judges here while I was in, uh, yeah, I do, uh, while I was in Arizona, and I, I finished that, moved into Joshua. But in, actually, from Joshua to Judges and to Ruth. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the way I went. Yeah. And you followed it in order. Anyway, uh, to, to go through the book of Judges and to see how again and again and again the people would be oppressed. Yeah. Turn to God, God would send a judge to save them. They would get right. It wasn't an issue of just a military, you know, victory. It was always about people, the people repenting and getting right with God, and then God would deliver them. Well, I think it. I think the whole thing proves Josh's point more than anything that the reason people get so mad if you don't participate in voting is because that's their religion. You're violating their God. And isn't and you know, in the last hour you talked about the tribulation. Isn't that what the tribulation period is all about? Of what's it going to take to get you to bow the knee to the government instead of to God? How hmm. far are you going to go? Is it going to be starvation? Not a whole lot here. Is it, it, <laughs> as long as they're killing brown people, we'll go along with it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot make, forcing people. You know, back to when you were talking about how they demanded a king or whatever. And My favorite part of that whole thing is when... Uh, God tells him, in that time, you will cry out because of what your king's doing to you, and I won't hear you. You made your choice. Well, now we're at another pinnacle in history where we've got to make a choice. As, well, for Christians, they got to make a choice. And even you non-Christians got to make a choice. Will you be free men or slaves? That's been the struggle question from the beginning of time. Are you going to be free men or slaves? But Josh, it's Christian to be ruled over, don't you know? <laughs> how did they? How did the Israelites become the slaves of the of the no. Egyptians in the first place? Do you remember that? Food, 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 food. They came to Egypt because there was a famine, and they came to Egypt to get grain. And they stayed. And they stayed. And then, when things got bad, they sold all of their property for more grain. Things got worse. They sold all of their children. They sold themselves. They sold themselves and their children into slavery. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. He was hungry, dude. It was good <laughs> stew. <laughs> it must have been <laughs> <laughs> For a bowl of stew. It's probably deer, though. So. No, okay, no, no. It's actually, it was lentil stew, and, uh, and my kids made some for okay, part of, no one of their, birth, one of their right? projects. No <laughs> and I, I don't know. The kids did a good job. It was pretty tasty, but still. I wouldn't let you pay me to eat lentils. Have you ever had lentil loaf? And Mom, sounds... if you're listening, I still will never forgive lentil loaf. <laughs> No amount of ketchup can mask that disgust. Oh, no. Wow. You just eat the ketchup off the top. I'm done. <laughs> okay, we are really going down. Let's take the call. 458 <laughs> Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Hey, hey who is this? Hey, this is Claudio. Claudio, what's hey, on your mind? Hey, Claudio, how you doing? Doing great. Hey, you gotta, I, I, was block, I was watching a, a video about some doctors and scientists. And the video is called The True Source of Random Mass Shooting in Violence. So they have a little list there. So all they have, the shooters have in common was the psychotropic drugs, their own treatment. And here's a little list. Westside Middle School, 1998, 5Q, 10 wound, drug, Ritalin. Thurston High, 1998, 2Q, 22 wounded, drug, Prozac. Columbine, 1999, 12Q, 23 wounded, drug, Luvox. Bishop Newman High, 2001, one wounded, 
Prozac. Grand Hill High, 2001, 5 women. The Alexa in FX Store. Abolition School of Law, 2002, 2 killed, 3 wounded. Oh, this, they didn't, they, they, I didn't see this, the name of the drug, but there wasn't some drug there. Virginia Tech, 2007, 33 killed, 29 wounded. Drug record sealed. They didn't want to, to show what drug they used anymore. The, uh, what's interesting is a lot of those drugs that you're talking about are drugs that they give kids in school, and all of them are pharmaceutical drugs. All of them are prescription. None of them are these ones that are supposedly illegal. That's, that, that's what he was saying at the start of his call, is that they, there's a link between all of these school shootings. In all of these cases that he was just talking about, every single one of those kids that performed the shooting had been on some kind of psychotropic drug that was issued by a school. To deal with some kind of an issue. Or so Josh is right. The only way we can stop school shootings is to get rid of schools. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah. I, well, I there is definitely a link between pharmaceuticals and the state and violence. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about the link I mean, there's no, the state and violence. There's no great conspiracy. Yeah, there's, there's a huge link between states and violence. I mean, 157 million people got killed in the last century mm -hmm. through wars. What's interesting is 100 million of them were dead by their states, not in wars. Claudio, thanks for the call. Appreciate that. That's right, a thanks. good food for yeah, thought. Yeah, but the, the state's there to protect you. Otherwise, everybody would kill each other. Are you a utopian? Yes, I am. I'm, obviously, I'm a utopian. Listen to the last hour. What was I talking about? Utopia the whole time. You know, we want to talk about... You know, what, what's really funny, the though... crocodile tear. Oh. i got to bring this up because it really still angers mm -hmm. me. I can tell. There was 20-some kids killed yesterday. In Waco, Texas, the government killed 30 or 40 little kids. Yeah, and you didn't hear the public outcry then. I didn't hear anyone saying, we need to put restrictions on the government. We probably should ban uh, assault weapons, or maybe we should ban the gas that they use that you can't use in warfare, but you can use on your own people. Maybe we should ban those things and keep the government from doing that stuff. No, all we said was, we need more laws to stop these crazy Koreshes from going downtown mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, you know, the story's old. They could have arrested him the day before they attacked his compound, but that's not any fun. You don't get to kill little kids then. No one, where's the outcry from that? We're going to hear about this forever from the media, from the state. They're going to talk about this. They're going to have, re, you know, We, we didn't get to uh, use that gas in Vietnam, but that wasn't a war. That was just police action, so we didn't have to follow any rules. And they were yellow. Oh, yeah. That, it always depends on what color your skin is, whether... I mean, white people, Europeans can't <laughs> use the bad stuff on each other anymore. It's the way the way people signed the agreement. But you can use it on your own people. I mean, we're mocking it. We're making light and stuff, but it's because we're mocking it. We're mocking how stupid this is and how we're so complacent and compliant to it. The government killed 30 or 40 some little kids. No one gives a crap. No one cares at all. Uh, U.S. Marshals killed Randy Weaver's kid and in the his back, wife shot, shot him his in the kid back. in the back. He was 14. Shot his wife in the brain from 20 feet. The high-powered rifle and big scope. Superb sniper. Oops, I didn't mean to shoot her in the eyeball. I was shooting at the guy that was in the house that I couldn't see. I was hoping for a ricochet. They got off scot-free. Off the free. back of her skull, maybe? The state has the full right and authority to kill whoever they want, and don't you dare... No, they do not have the authority. They have the power. power. Oh, they no, they the... give themselves the authority. I mean, that was what, part of what Hillbilly was saying. It's always legal. They never break mm -hmm. the law. They're always making sure that they pass a good little law first, and then they go do it. Look at the Patriot Act. That's why they get away with stuff. And the NDAA. I mean, you watch movies... Right, you can watch TV and you'll see some CSI, or I don't actually watch any of them, but I've watched, I remember what I was watching for a little while, and it's just so ironic, because they're saying, well, the Patriot Act lets us do this, this, and this, and I'm like, wow, even Hollywood's telling us what the government's doing, and everyone's just like, oh, uh, give me some more popcorn, it's a really good show. But it's okay if they have that much power, as long as we get back to limited government. True. We need to limit how many people they kill. 
We need to limit how many of their cows they kill. Tell you, it's a coming. When you're no longer going to be a milk cow, you're going to be a beef cow. Yeah, I mean, as, a, as we fall off the fiscal cliff... <laughs> Ah, oops, that wasn't that far. Funny. <laughs> if we fall off the fiscal cliff, they'll definitely have to come fleece everybody for everything. They're not going to fall off the fiscal cliff. They're going to wait till the 11th hour, and everyone's going to be scared. They do it so many times. I'm only 38, and I've seen it happen probably 50 well, times. They, are, they already put off the cliff from January from, from December. Oh, we have to deal with this now. Now they've, they've put it off. They don't have to deal with it until January. I was making a joke about the fiscal cliff. I'm, I mean, yeah. if our monetary system collapses. You mean, you mean when the fiscal the monetary system collapses? Abyss. That's more than a cliff. It's a lot like, more than a cliff. Probably. That's hell. Uh, <laughs> burn up, no more recovery. Let's take the call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yes, hello. Hey, who is this? Oh, it's Robert. Robert, what's on your mind? Hey, I really love you guys. Uh, sparking up these cold nights <laughs> reminds me of old. We Willie Wally back in them days. <laughs> and I'm sure Miss Old Joe Vogler. Hmm. Anyway, I really appreciate your conversation this morning. Thanks. And, uh, uh, okay, you know, the power of group, I know I know most, most Christian families would like to have their kids, their kids uh, homeschooled. All right, but you know, the, the power of the group is more powerful of a learning process. I'd rather not close the schools, but bring our soldiers home, put a sentry at every school, every public facility, because our, I believe, in theory, I have a strong belief that I have a notion, okay, this uh, human being that does this evil act, you know, could be any person like you and me, but it was very evil act. Okay, they they may haven't had a normal life like you and me, but they may be. Have you ever had the thought? Okay, get in the paranormal stage and the and the psyche. Okay, we have cyber terrorism. We have. Uh, Terrorists that we really would love to get back at this country. We have inside terrorism. Inside terrorism, even our own people that are working would love to work for the terrorist movement. Okay, that is how how vulnerable this country is. Can you define what you mean by terrorists, though? T- terrorist, okay, as in, in an act that is to have an affliction any way to, to, to bring a message across to this great nation or to anybody that believes in freedom, okay, is a, is a big act of uh, demolishing people, you know, hurting them, hurting their families, hurting their children, you know, that is totally act of terrorism. Well, uh... But, but, but the point I want to get to, okay... I know you got some interesting questions to ask me. Uh, hypothetically, what if this individual was under hypnotism? You know, people pick a vulnerable, these terrorists will feed, and they'll, you know, they, they don't want to get themselves exposed, so they use, they use the innocent, right? You know, who, who knows... Um, I pray that they go as far as they can investigating this scenario, this situation that happened, this very bad tragedy. You know, and who knows if this guy wasn't hypnotized by the terrorist movement. I I, uh, I wouldn't totally disagree in the terrorist movement that I would say right. most likely would do would be our own government. Right. Let me define... Uh, terrorism according to the dictionary it's okay. a, the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce especially for political purposes mhm you got uh, hit it on the button would you say that um well political that, purposes would you but... say that the state 
uses violence and threats to intimidate and coerce people, for especially purpose. for political pur- purposes? Um, I would say a small percentage, but I'd say it to be interacted from... Don't Isn't all aspects of your life governed? Right. Because this country is so free and there are so many people come in and out... This, wait a minute, no. Isn't all aspects of your life governed by our government? All aspects of your life have a regulation on it. And the only reason you obey him is because of the threat of the use of violence, intimidation, coercion, and it's all for political purposes. So right. isn't the state, in fact, terrorists? According to our, according to the dictionary's definition of it, anyway. Yeah, well, I'm I'm personally not so worried about guys in Pakistan that are walk, that are getting around on goats, and that can barely feed their kids enough rice that are really ticked off at us for flying drones around their country and killing their little kids, I mean, I don't blame them so much for being mad at the United States government. Right. It could be a movement even in our own country. I you worry know, more our, about... Our own people. But what I worry more about the government that I can see with my own eyes killing people and terrorizing people. Right now we're terrorizing the world mm-hmm. than some lone... Whatever gunman. I mean, I I don't. We're never going to get away from. There's never going to be. A, we're going to always have evil people. We're always going to have poor people. We're always going to have, you know, a litany of different parts in whatever society you have. It's always going to be there. The problem is that we have, in my personal opinion, we have a ruling class that has the power to terrorize, that have given themselves the power to kill, steal, and destroy. They're a mob no different than a gangster during Prohibition. Or or the mob in France, the rule of terror. Remember that? Yep. The, right. I mean, the whole point of the French Revolution, the rule of terror, was to get people so mortified that they would do whatever they were told to do. The history of the word terrorism came in 1795 from France in the specific sense of government intimidating during the reign of terror in France. So it originated as some, an act that the government did. I do definitely mm-hmm. agree with you on bringing the troops home. All right. right. I mean, do you, th- do you think but this this would be in the psychological f- sense in like a, like a Unabomber, you know, these these people who who go in, in the name of Allah I mean, you know, and then they want to attack our country, but a lot of them are affiliated with a lot of people in our country. Well, let's let's take the um, can we take the state that our country paints as the most uh, terroristic of all of them, and that would be Iran, right? Mm-hmm. Iran's the the feeder and the birthplace and the promoter of all this terrorism. But in Iran, you can practice um, religion, can't you? Yeah. And what are some of the other attributes of Iran? Not very many. I don't really like them that much. I don't really like them either, but just bear with me. There's a couple of things there that you can do that you can't do in a place called Saudi Arabia. Women are treated much better. Way better. Way better in Iran. Women can own property. They can divorce their husbands. Which they cannot do in Saudi Arabia. Sharia law is enforced 500 times stricter in Saudi Arabia than it is in Iran. So why is it that we're attacking Iran as far as um, politically and um, all of our leaders go, and not Saudi Arabia? Who gives more money to terrorism, Iran or Saudi Arabia? Well, there's, there's definitely a, a bigger agenda behind it. Yeah, and sure. you got so, you got to look in in our government. Okay. It's like, you know, I, sh- shame on me, you know, I don't feel... So bad now. I, I I didn't, you know, I didn't vote, but that I don't feel so bad. Well, Iran's one of the few places where you can uh, be of a different religion and mm-hmm. not get persecuted for it. That definitely isn't the case in Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. Right, but there's money interests. Right. So who's the real terrorist? I'm, and I don't think Saudi Arabia or Iran are. Well, is it their we are because we're meddling in both of in their, their perspective. They they all looking at us. 
Sure. In their perspective, we're the terrorists. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it just goes back to square one. It, it, it's, a, it's a religious war. Right, that we have no business being a part of. Right. Well, I mean, can I ask you a question? I mean, if you just look at it as a issue between neighbors, mm-hmm. at what point do you have the right to go over and tell your neighbor how to live his or her life? Okay, okay, that at the point. Okay, for instance, I had, I had a, we had a neighbor. His. Uh, you got to make it quick. We got about a minute until the break here. Okay, all right. he, he he demolished and uh, eliminated his parents. Okay, we had seen like in months months ahead of time that we we had to interact and get to these parents. Say, hey, you are doing something wrong with this child. Okay, this this child would tell us things that you wouldn't believe. And then at that point, that's when you got to stick your nose in. you got to have the courage and guts to say what's right. And even if they are doing it wrong, if, you know, if they're going to hold their child or do something insane that is very, very wrong, you got to have the courage to step in and do the right thing. All right. we got more Patriots Lament right after the Fox News on KFAR. All right, welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com and on your smartphone with the TuneIn Radio app. Uh, in the studio today, we've got Josh Bennett, Aaron Bennett, and Aaron Cooper. I am Steve Floyd. And uh, Josh, what, what? Let's take the call. The, Taking wait, the call wait, wait, what, wait, before wait, we go to the call. One no. sec. Whoa, that was one. I wanted to make one more point, though, about Saudi Arabia. Recorded, they're the most oppressive um, Middle Eastern government there is. The, dy- the family dynasty that we set up there, and we set them up is the most oppressive to ever come along. In fact, everything I've read about it says that their people hate us more than any other Arab people because of the dynasty that we set up there. They make Saddam Hussein look like a little schoolgirl. Oh, yeah. He was. By comparison. Comparatively. Okay. Steve just pulled up some news here. It looks like that our shooter, Adam Lanza, yesterday, not our shooter, the shooter, apparently had a personality disorder and a mental oh, illness. so shocked. And apparently was on mind-altering drugs. Isn't one of the main side effects of virtually every single one of those antidepressant drugs, isn't one of the side effects always suicidal or homicidal thoughts? Yep. Every single... I mean, they even tell you that when they go... Oh, Take Prozac. But then it's very in. They go. They talk about 500 miles an hour. They talk about all the side effects, including suicide and hostility. <laughs> wow. My fiance, she just, she just finished her bachelor's in pre-med just two days ago, and, and she told me something. She said that her professor told her that every single U.S. citizen that they preach and teach should be on an antidepressant, and that's what they teach in those universities. That's horrible. Wow. Mind blowing. And that's what they teach your students coming in. So of course you walk in there, you have any disorder, any illness, any sickness, any pain. It all goes. The first thing they're gonna give you is a depressant. Yeah, because the state's bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical companies. Of course they're gonna teach that. It's the state again. I can anything you throw at me, I can throw it back at the state. Apples? Just give it. A <laughs> <shot>. <laughs> yep. Mylar. <laughs> wow. wow. Bring it. Come on. Cherries. I think about that one. <laughs> well, we could get into subsidies. Any problem? Pro- okay, let's do it. Four five eight talk. The yes. number. <laughs> Good the morning, nice caller. Chair. Who's this? Like fall on the ground. Are you there? Hello. Hey, state your name. This is Robert again. Robert again. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, I I didn't want to leave you hanging, and I know we had a news break there. Um. Okay, what well, was the question he was asking? Uh, it was about Saudi Arabia. Okay. Why is it we want to bomb Iran into the Middle Ages and basically nuke them or do anything great, and yet at the same time, the most oppressive Middle Eastern government is Saudi Arabia, and we're good friends with them? Oh, goodness gracious. That's like having their, um, I don't know, your uh, brother or sister or your neighbor doing the dirty work. I think it's probably because they're still using our dollar as the petrodollar, and oh. Iran is not. 
Bang. Oh, there it is. Thank you <laughs> for the call, brother. 458 Doc, the number. Good morning. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yeah, this is Sourdough. Sourdough, what's on your mind? Yeah, they had a, uh, interesting. They had a uh, mineral symposium in town, I think it was last week, uh, by some big companies and the mineral companies. And uh, they were bringing out that uh, they, they've done a big survey over Afghanistan, that whole area over there looking for minerals. Anyway, they found this huge copper uh, deposit in Afghanistan, and uh, guess who's mining it? Chinese. Yeah, of course. So we got our boys over there protecting uh, this com- country there uh, so the Chinese can mine it. I mean, we're blowing up our boys over there uh, so so the Chinese can big conglomerates can mine it. Also, you know, the the, uh, the the Arab countries over there, they're so worried about their kids getting blown up by U.S. bombs. But they, they strap, uh, I mean, they're strapping bombs on their kids, sending them out to blow stuff up. Uh, but we're killing our kids over here by, uh, by giving them Prozac and uh, well, just a, a numeral amount of garbage that's killing them and uh, and making them uh, criminals. And they were, they were wondering wondering why why is why are they going bad? You know, I mean, my goodness sakes. Uh, but we need to realize that there's uh, there's two powers in the universe. There's either there's God and then there's Satan, and, and we we can see. Uh, Satan's powers all over the place, and we just need to put our trust in God, and uh, that was all I wanted to say today. Thanks, Howard. I appreciate yeah, your point of view. Right 458 on. Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello? Hello, this is here, Billy again. Yeah, Billy, what's on your mind? I don't mean to double dip, but you are asking a question of why these things are all like this. And I just want to repeat what I've said so many times. They are doing it all on purpose. Yep. It is naive to think for a moment that events of history just happen. If you will study history, you can unravel it. And I'm not being conspiratorial or anything. I'm not even going to you know, name names or anything. But there are forces at work on this planet who have been doing, particularly since World War One and Two exactly what they intend to do, all right? And this is not just accidental. We are headed for a particular destination. And if people can't see what it is, well, then it's too late for us to tell them. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. It is going to come, and you're going to have to make a choice. The good book says that. I can always quote the good book rather than talk about conspiracy theories. The Bible says you're going to have to make a choice eventually. You are not going to be able to remain in society and buy and sell, do business. You're not going to be able to do business without that number. If you don't think it's a Social Security number, okay, that's cool, that's fine. Then it's another number. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you must bow the knee to the image that speaks. And if you don't think it's TV, that's fine. Then watch TV. I don't care. But just recognize it is an image that speaks. So at least take it as a warning that the image that speaks is on its way. That's all. If you if you take it for no more than that, I think they're one and the same essentially. And I don't use any number to do business. I I will I cannot in good conscience use a number to do business. And I'm not alone in that. The Quakers never have. That's my people. And the Mennonites never have. And think about that. The Mennonites seceded, if you will. Mm. The Quakers seceded at their time. They haven't anymore. They've gone back into Babylon. But people secede in groups all the time in history. They get away from cities, and they set up their own little uh, intentional communities, if you want a a left-wing term for it, communes, if you want a, a, a term that's been corrupted, but groups of people who intend to live together and not hurt each other because they know each other. Like Adam Smith said, Groups of over 200 are are just bound to fester crime because people don't know each other anymore. And you can't have a contiguous culture unless you have a a village where people know each other. And then you won't have these crazy things happen so much. 
At any rate, I'll get off the phone and let somebody else talk. Thank you for the call, Hill oh. Billy. Appreciate that. You, you know, I he said something that it's just it's eating at me, and it, it's that issue of the kind of the uh, the incrementalist point of view that basically the the progressives, whatever you want to call them, they've been going at us for a long time after the after the Constitution, after the whole issue of freedom, incrementally for over a hundred years, and we haven't seen it coming because we haven't paid attention to it, and so many of us will incrementally sell our souls. You know, we, we may have a problem with, uh, what, what does the government, what business does the government have to, to issue a license, a marriage license to anyone? That's right. Well, you know, who, who says the government should be able to decide who gets married, but yet we go out and we get a marriage license? I know some people don't. Well, we also gripe about who does get a marriage license. Yeah. Right, that's the funniest thing of all to me, and I've said it a number of times on here that um, gay people complain about not being able to get a marriage license. They want the state to license what they do. So, Have at it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wait, wait, you have regulated me. In Regulate fact, me if, too. if we rewound like 200 years, it'd be the other way around. People would be crying for them to have to have a special license. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'd all be complaining that they were getting discriminated against because they were the only ones that had to be licensed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, that's be, true. Beat me too. Beat uh, me too. I need a beating. <laughs> well, we started the show off like 10 years ago. <laughs> Talking about the death of the Bill of Rights. I don't know if we need to beat that up anymore, but uh. well, I, you know, Adam Co- or Aaron Cooper here made a comment toward, toward the beginning of this hour about how if you sell yourself to the government at whatever level you are, you're whoring yourself out. God said that through the prophet through the prophet Jeremiah, and if you, individually, how often I'm, I'm asking myself this question: How often do I sell myself to the government? How often do I intentionally go out there, or or unintentionally, just just in order to get along, sell myself and my children to the government? Do I do I send my kids to the government indoctrination centers? Well, the marriage license is a good uh, example. Yeah, you sell yourself because you're going to get a tax break. You get medical benefits. You'll get blah 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 blah. When there's always a handout. If you'll just give up no. this, I mean, there's always a trade-off. The government's was, good at it. I was in the army when I got married, and just by getting that marriage license, boom, I got more money. I got housing allowance. I got a nicer place to live. I got uh, special allowances for my wife, for food. I, I she got medical care. I got medical care. All of that stuff that came just from submitting that marriage license through the proper channels instantaneously I was rewarded financially. Yeah, they always they always have, I mean, the carrot works so much better than the stick, even though I think they prefer the stick because it's more fun for them, but the carrot works really well. I mean, whenever you think about giving something up, they've always got something to give you back. That's why we have 50% of the people right now on getting something for nothing from the government. That's why... The government is so easy, like right now with uh, the school shooting. They're going to do something. Well, they have to do something. And what's so disgusting is I I was listening to the talk shows yesterday just to kind of get the feel of what was going on. Plus, I wanted to know what was going on. People are clamoring to who? To save us. The state. Save us. Save us, state. Save us. Now, we don't think about the fact that they've already told us the reason they're there is to prevent those things from happening in the first place. Another epic failure on the part of the state. And if it was a private institution, this was a private organization that failed utterly so many stinking times, time and time and time again. Like a college that we heard about for months on the news? You would never go back and use them. Right? If you were using a service that constantly let you down, you'd be like, think I'm going to take my business somewhere else. These guys get to fail utterly over and over and over and demand 
that you use them and Some, demand that they get more. I mean, they failed, so they need obviously the government needs more tools to stop these things from happening. So why don't we just all give up, give them all of our guns, give them all our food, give them all of our everything, and just say, I'm going to work as a slave. You just take care of me from the time I'm born to the time I'm dead. Obviously, ultimate government is the answer. Well, Josh, they don't always fail. A lot of times when they set the whole thing up and they give you all the means to commit the crime and they give you the idea, they are there ready to take you down. Yeah, you know, it's always funny that the FBI is really good at stopping their own schemes. That is amazing. Well, no, no, no. It was a safe place. The principal said so. <laughs> they had metal detectors, or they're getting ready to, huh? Yeah. I don't know. It's a disgusting thing. What's disgusting is that so many people were all coming together, you know, we're all sad, and the state lowers the flags to half mass. And you can just see the state like a big hen opening her her wings for the huddled masses to come underneath her for protection. You know what? It's, it's disgusting. In the Bible, the Lord, he says, come to me, you are broken and weary laden, you know? And he says, I'm close to the broken heart. Any tragedy, they're right there. Like, just completely just replacing our own God. No, it is God. It, it the is. state is God. The state is man's God now. It's the Christian's God who bow down to him. It's the non-Christian's God to bow down to him. The state is God. Yeah. And until we that? decide we're not going to have the state as our God. Or master. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Depending on which your religious persuasion. Well, language. anything before God's an idol. That's a pretty good commandment. <laughs> Bang. So, wow. That would be the state. Yeah. If you put if you put it before God. No, it is before God. It puts itself before God. And if you're uh, not of a persuasion of that nature, anybody that's a, your master besides you. That's right. So I say that we try not my own thought-out idea, but an idea that we've brought up. What if we just got rid of the state? Well, Josh, then everybody would just kill everybody. Then all the, and we'd have public school shootings all the time. Oh, wait, we wouldn't have public schools. We Dang wouldn't it. have compulsory education. Everybody would be stupid. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look how stupid Thomas Jefferson was. Well, he was homes. Oh, never mind. Look how a, stupid George Washington was. Lincoln was pretty stupid. Actually, he was really smart. He just lusted for power. I know he was. That's what, he was homeschooled. Hmm. Two. Let's do... 458 Talk, the number. Good morning, Call. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Who good is morning. this? This is Cecily. Cecily, good morning. Yes, I love that you uh, investigate the roots of words when you're... Uh, uh, thinking about the meaning of, of things. That, well, I like roots. That's really great. How I, I, I like that, too. And uh, it's true that we are the terrorists of the world. And and the, the idea is that even that some people think that we want to go... No, no. Hang uh, on. I think the state is the terrorist of the world. Yeah, well, yeah, well, and that, that's that's true. I yeah, mean, don't be throwing that we at me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. The state, the country, <laughs> this country. That's what I'm talking no, about. No, 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 I think no, no, every no, 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 single, no. It's every state. state, every state. Well, is a and the terrorist idea that, organization. that you need to to pound on a child to teach them right and wrong. That's kind of weird because if you somebody was talking about that yesterday, uh, it, it, you know that something went wrong with the kids, and maybe we need to have a board of education with. That would we would beat them to 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 uh, teach them right and wrong. That kind of got me under the craw because if you pound on a child, they're not going to think about what they did anymore. They're just going to think about that you're hitting them, and they'd be pissed off because you're abusing them. Not what they did anymore. It doesn't even matter. It's what, what you're doing is wrong. So and, and so, how can they think of what their actions were about unless you? You know, sit down and talk to him and respect that, him as a human being that could think. I did hear the, some of that yesterday, too, when people were saying, well, the reason is because that uh, principals don't get to paddle the kids in school anymore, which is so stupid because what you're doing is saying the state, because mm -hmm. the principal is the state, isn't taking care of the kids properly anymore, which that's go right back to we're looking for the state mm -hmm. to solve the problem when the state is the problem. Who, who is it that gave the medications to the shooter? 
I mean, we we investigated here. We did we we did uh, didn't take very long to find that there in fact was a link that the shooter in that massacre yesterday was on an antidepressant medication because he had a personality disorder. Who gave him that? Was did his mommy and daddy give him that? Well, his mom worked for the school. So she might have referred him to it, mm-hmm. which might be why he went and shot her first. It's just sick. It's horrible. Four five eight, talk the number. You ready for another call? Yeah. Good morning. Who's this? Lisa. Lisa, what's on your mind? I wanted to say something about um, fluoride and then the Codex Elementarius and then about agenda and conspiracy. The first occurrence of fluoridated drinking water was found in Germany's concentration camps. The Gestapo had little concern about fluoride's supposed effect on children's teeth. The alleged reason for mass medicating water with sodium fluoride was to sterilize humans and force the people in concentration camps into calm submission. And, you know, uh, um, it's proven to cause lowered IQ, sterilization, and, uh, you know, uh, destroy that part of your brain that is connected with independence. And then um, the, the UN has this uh, uh, Codex Alimentarius where they're trying to supposedly harmonize uh, nutritional supplements to protect consumers. And in fact, what they're going to be doing is, uh, you know, um, making um, supplements, except for low, low, low doses, uh, illegal, you know, because they'll call it a drug, and then it has to be regulated. And then, of course, it's in competition with Big Pharma, which Big Pharma has already got gotten everyone in the country to think that all they need to do is take a pill to be happy. Exactly. Yeah. And fluoridization is a good point. The, all of our waters, I think, not here in Fairbanks No, no, we, uh, yeah, the, we, uh, we got them to stop that. They, as uh, far as we know. Well, I, a, I noticed. It's actually, I actually a doping medication. I noticed though. after they stopped it that the smell of my water changed significantly. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it was. Uh, I'm. It's not as pleasant as it was before. I'm. I'm not as as. In, of course, because you're not dope. I'm, I'm not. God, not as good water. water. <laughs> you almost fell out of your chair. That's awesome. I, no, I actually, I don't know if it was because I was getting doped, but I, I did notice that I wasn't as pleased with the smell of my water after they took the fluoride out. Here it's a pacifist me. medication. Yeah. Fluoride is the. They, come on, they fluoridate. The water, because it pacifies people, it makes you pacified, mm. makes you, yeah, whatever happens. You can't have a rebellious people that want their rights and liberties in a society like this. You need people that just want to obey and do what they're told and ask for more. I mean, come on. Dope. How could we look at this thing? They dope our water, <laughs> and yet... People still say, "Wow, I guess what we need is limited doping water, limited government." Just a little so they bit just of put poison. A little just poison a little in poison. The water. You know, they use fluoride and rat poison. So are we rats? Well, the pipe pipe. Four five eight. Talk the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Teresa. Teresa, what's on your mind? Destruction. Well, I'm going back to. Um, you guys were talking about our relationship as citizens with the government and as Christians, and it got me thinking about our churches and nonprofit um, situations and what is it, the 501c3, and I just wanted to hear what you guys thought about all that. And Do you think the Christian churches are wrong to um, have a relationship with the government that way? Yep, I personally do. This is Josh, just so I don't speak for anyone else. The 501c3, I believe, is the church's bending the knee to the state. It was never necessary in the past. It's still not necessary today. There's still churches that will not get a 501c3, and the federal government doesn't do anything to them. How could they? I mean, could you imagine the uproar if... I mean, because everything's a facade with the state. The state's a facade by itself, but... Everything is a facade where they they intentionally make you fear that if you didn't have that. Could you imagine if an FBI team or Homeland Security, state troopers, anyone goes in and rounds up a body of people, 200 people, let's say, and they say, well, they didn't have their 501c3 corporation status to be able to meet. People would go nuts here. Well, I hope at least four or five people we here in this room, at least we would go nuts and say, no, 
You can't do that. They have the right to gather and worship freely just because they don't have your license. So, yeah, I think this, the church totally dropped the ball when they went in and got their status. I think don't pay the tax. I don't know. I, yeah, I can I can only say, I know why some of them do. Uh, I can like only say that for, for 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 our church, uh, I, I'm part of the leadership of our church. The reason why we did it is we had people inside the church asking us for tax exempt um, coupons, basically saying, yeah. "Hey, look, I want a receipt, so when I do my taxes, I can prove that I gave to a charitable organization." And so they, it goes back and so to they, the handout. They, they pressured us. Over and over, hey, we need to get our official IRS paperwork so that we can get our tax exemption on the money that we gave to the church this year. Right. And so a, it goes back to the handout. We submit to the state question. for. Okay. Go ahead. I'll shut up. Do Do you know? I've heard. I don't know if this is true. I was hoping you would know. Um, is there something that church leadership has to sign when they when they get the nonprofit status that says they're not going to preach on certain things? No. There was no such paperwork. Good to hear. No, yeah, there was absolutely no kind of vow or promise or pledge. It was simply uh, a, hey, this is our this is our organization. We didn't even have to say what we believed or anything else like that. Just that uh, we are not a profit. That we are not for profit. That we're not doing this to try to make ourselves rich. It's a slow fade into Nazi it, well, concentration. Yeah, and I camps. and I and I fully understand your point of view. And I personally, I don't think I would have pursued it. It, it was because we had people in the church saying, "Hey, I want to make sure that I can claim the money that I gave this year on my taxes." Well, tell them to quit using Caesar's money and give you gold. <laughs> well, look at that's what they ought to do. I mean, I'm serious. That, no. Let's go back to what Hillbilly was saying. Quit using yeah. Caesar's money yeah. then. Yeah. You want a tax exempt status? Go down to Cleaver's place. Trade your fiat crap currency that's worth less every single minute that you breathe. Trade it for some gold. And if you want to give tithe to the church, go give them an ounce of gold. Well, until we do the gold thing, I mean, think about these. No, not until you can, you can do it right now. For, okay. It it's not a. It's not like you can't do it. Go buy a bag of silver and go give it to your church. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Tax exempt, baby. Tax exempt. I totally agree. But for those who don't deal in gold and silver, they're getting raped every single day on every dollar that comes in and goes. And so they want. They pay enough in taxes. They mm-hmm. might as well get something back for what they're it, given. Exactly. I mean, and I mean that's that's pretty much what it came down to is that we're we're just trying to make it as easy as possible for people to not have to pay more. Right, because we're looking at it the wrong way. We're trying to get the state to seed something back from us because they rape us every day for our money anyways. But what I'm saying is there's other options. Yeah. They might be a little bit harder, but at least you don't have to bend your knee to the state for it. And I was hoping you are going to play Symphony of Destruction. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that does put us at the end of the show, however. Quick, uh, the do we have an action point? Take a mortal man and put him in control. Watch him become a god. Watch people's heads roll. Action point? Yeah. Separate yourself. Get out of the system. Get out of the... Ah, secede. Personal secession, baby. Flee from Babylon. We are out of time. Check us out online. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And I will, we will see you next week right here on KFAR Local Talk Radio.